والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم and the merciful, I send praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I send peace and blessings to the Prophet Muhammad, his companions, all those who call to his way to the day of judgment. As to what follows, we begin with the greeting words of the righteous, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The fourth year of the prophethood of Muhammad ibn Abdullah, peace be upon him, was a year of great persecution. The Prophet had brought a message of Tawheed, of the oneness of God. He taught his people not to bow down to idols, not to disrespect their parents, not to torture and harm the innocent, not to base their society upon nationalism. But they refused to accept this message and they began to torture him and his followers in the most horrible fashion. By the fifth year, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, if you were to go to Abyssinia, Al-Habasha, it would be better for you. The king will not tolerate injustice, and it is a land of truth. Go there till Allah relieves you from your distress. After this permission was given, a group of 12 men and four women left for Abyssinia. Among them was Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an, and the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him named Ruqayya. After having reached Abyssinia and staying for at least a few months, they received a false report from Mecca that all of the people of Mecca had embraced Islam. When they heard this they were overjoyed and they returned to Mecca to find that the persecution had intensified. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, again sent his endangered Sahaba to the land of Ethiopia. This time another group of 83 men and 19 women left and crossed the Red Sea. They left Mecca in secret and they crossed into the Red Sea and into Ethiopia. When they reached the land of Ethiopia, they found a people who were steeped in the original beliefs of Christianity. They found the land of justice and they found a righteous king. Who was this righteous emperor and what was this land? It is reported that the land of Ethiopia was a land with an ancient history. And the leader who had inherited the power of this ancient society was Ashama ibn Abjar. The title given to him was An Najashi or the Negus. He was the king and inheritor to a great empire called Aksum. This empire was founded long before Christ, but by the year, by, by the centuries, the third to the sixth century, it became the greatest market in Northeast Africa. Merchants were trading with Aksum from all the way north on the Nile and from the Indian Ocean. The city of Aksum also claimed to contain the Ark of the Covenant, which had come from the Prophet Suleiman, alayhi salam, from Solomon and from Sheba, and was brought, according to their legends, to Ethiopia by their son Menelik. 
So when the Sahaba were safely living in Aksum, Quraysh sent two emissaries, Amr ibn al-As, who later became a famous Muslim, and Abdullahi ibn al-Rabi'a. They came representing the polytheists of Mecca, and they brought expensive gifts in order to bribe the generals and the army, and to bribe the king. They sought a, an audience with the king, and thereby stated that these people who you have given shelter to have forsaken their religion, and they have not accepted yours. But the Najashi replied to them and said, No, by God, I will not surrender them. No people who have sought my protection, settled in my country, and asked for protection will be let loose. If they are as they are, I will give them up to them and send them back to their own people. But if what they say is false, I will protect them and see that they receive proper hospitality while under my protection. The Nagus then, the Najashi, summoned the Muslims and he asked them to represent themselves. What do you stand for? What is the basic teachings of your Prophet? And one of the famous companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Jafar ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu an, he stood up and he addressed the king in the following words. O king, we were plunged in the depth of ignorance and barbarism. We worship idols. We lived in an unclean life. We ate dead meat. We spoke abominations. We did not respect our neighbors. We knew no laws but that of the strong. And then Allah raised up among us a man whose birth, truthfulness, and honesty were well known to us. He called us to the oneness of Allah. He taught us to speak the truth, to be faithful to our trust, to be merciful, to regard the rights of our neighbors and our kith and kin. He forbade us from speaking evil to women and from eating the, the, the substances or the wealth of the orphan. He ordered us to stay away from evil and abstain from evil in all forms. He taught us to offer prayers, to give in charity, and to observe fasting. We believed in him and we accepted his teachings. He taught us not to associate partners with Allah and he taught us that we should live a good life. For this, we have been tortured and injured and not finding safety amongst our own people. We have come to your country seeking protection from oppression. The Nagus then asked Jaffa ibn Abi Talib an, to read something from the Book of Allah. Read something from your scriptures. And Jaffa, being a very intelligent uh, and well-trained companion, read from Surah Maryam. When he read from this beautiful chapter that told the story of Mary, of Maryam, may Allah be pleased with her, and the birth of Jesus, and the miracles happening at this time, Najashi, recognizing the presence of the Creator, wept. His bishops and all in the, in the court also wept. And Najashi stated, of a truth, this and what Jesus brought have come from the same place. You too may go. He sent away Quraysh. He said, by God, I will never give them up. They shall not be betrayed. And so Najashi gave a strong representation of a righteous king. But Amr ibn al-As, being very cunning at that point in his life, didn't give up. The next day he returned to the Najashi and he stated, these people, they say that Jesus, the son of Mary, is a creation. He is not a God. He's not the son of God. Jaffa ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an was brought and he answered, we say about him that which our prophet has brought us, that Jesus is the slave of God, his apostle, his spirit, and his word, which was cast into Mary, the Blessed Virgin. 
When Najashi heard this, he picked up a, a stick and he said, By God, Jesus, the Son of Mary, does not exceed what you have said by the length of a stick. Then Najashi said, He who curses you will be fined. Not for a mountain of gold will I allow you, will I allow a man to hurt you. Go free and live within my lands. And so the Najashi, in accordance with the revelation that had come to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, who was guided by the Creator of the heavens and the earth, was a righteous person. He would not allow anyone to be oppressed within his country. His land was a land of truth. And the Muslims were able to enjoy sanctuary in a Christian land. This is an important aspect of history that needs to be brought out. With misunderstandings concerning the entrance of Islam into Africa, this is the first contact. Muslims did not come as conquerors. They did not come as an imperialistic army, but they came as refugees, seeking the help of a righteous Christian king. After this, a rebellion broke out. The Sahaba hid and sent a Zubair ibn al-Awwam an, to see what had happened. But by the will of Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, Najashi prevailed. Ibn Ishaq, the great uh, biographer of the Prophet, peace be upon him, reports, and he speaks about the Sahaba, and this is a very interesting uh, report, because he shows the, Suha the Sahaba now, companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, making a prayer for the Christian emperor. And he writes that the Sahaba said, We prayed to Allah to give Najashi victory over his enemies and to establish him in his country. As they were making their dua, while they were praying, Az Zubair ibn al Awam radiallahu an returned with the news of the victory of Najashi. And so they stayed in Al Habasha until the second Hijrah, the major migration that was made from Mecca to Medina. This is a powerful story. This is a powerful coming together of monotheism where the teachings that came to, to Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, and the teachings that came to Muhammad, peace be upon him, manifest themselves within their followers, and the followers go beyond the distance of prophets. They go beyond the fact that they were from different tribes, and they unite under the oneness of God. Let us return after a short break to hear more about this illustrious emperor of Abyssinia. And if you look into the early tafsir, early exegesis of the Quran, you will find that uh, all the mufassirin were trying to find out where are the seven earths. Earthquakes, natural or artificial, can delineate the boundaries between seven different zones within the earth. The, the conclusion that we have seven different layers within the earth came to not only in the 20th century. The true believer would prostrate down in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The blessings of that prostration will reach the seventh earth. peace and blessings be upon him, sent a very important letter with his companions. In this, he stated the following. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, from Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, to the great Najashi of Abyssinia, peace be upon he who follows the guidance. As to what follows, verily for you I praise Allah, the one whom there is no deity except him the sole king, the holy, the source of peace, the protector, and the guardian. I bear witness that Jesus, the son of Maryam, is the spirit belonging to Allah, 
and his word, which he cast into the chaste and excellent Virgin Mary. She thus became pregnant by means of his spirit and his inspiration with Jesus. She became pregnant in the same manner as he created Adam with his hand. Verily, I invite you to Allah, the one who has no partner, and to friendship, continuity, and government in obedience to him. I invite you to follow me and to have absolute certainty with what I have come with. Verily, I am the messenger of Allah, and I invite you and your government forces to Allah, the mighty, the majestic. Thus I have delivered the message and given you counsel. Therefore, accept my counsel. Peace be upon he who follows the guidance. This is a very important letter because not only does it express the, the, the message of Islam and conveys the prophethood, but you don't find other letters written by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to the great kings in such a format. It was a brotherly letter. It was a, le a letter in which the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, gives uh, proof of the scriptures. He speaks to the emperor in a language that he could understand. He shows him that the message of Islam is a consistent message and it is a message of all of the prophets. Later, Najashi wrote back to the Prophet, peace be upon him. The books of Sirah, of the biography of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu record that Najashi replied. From Nagus, Najashi, Ibn Abjar, peace be upon you, O Prophet of Allah, and mercy and blessings. In the name of Allah, besides whom there is no God, who has guided me to Islam. I have received your letter in which you mention the matter of Jesus and the Lord of the heavens and the earth. He is not one bit more than what you say. We know that with which you were sent to us and we have entertained your cousin and his companions. I testify that you are Allah's apostle, true and confirming those before you. I have given my pledge to you and to your cousin, and I have surrendered myself through him to the Lord of the worlds. I have sent to you my son Arha. I have control only over myself, and if you wish me to come to you, I will do so. I bear witness that what you say is true. Najashi testified to the oneness of God. Najashi showed his relationship with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. From that time, his relationship with, with the Creator of the heavens and the earth changed. But a great rebellion broke out within his land. The Sahaba, at that point, took a special hiding place and they were prepared to leave the country. But Najashi held out and he was able to put down the rebellions as they came up within his country. He was able to continue his belief and his story is a crucial story to Muslims and to those who believe in one God. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was the seal of the prophets and messengers. And his love for his companions continued throughout his life. It is reported that when the Najashi passed away and the word came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he prayed a special funeral prayer for Najashi. This is now known as Salat al-Janaza lil Ghaib. And it is the first time in history that a janazah prayer was made for an absent person. And so through the example of Najashi, this special Salat al-Janaza, this prayer for the, of the funeral of a person, was established that if the person who dies is not within your location, and it appears that there is nobody to pray upon that person, then you are compelled to make the janazah salat. The Prophet, peace be upon him, made a special dua, a special prayer 
to the creator of the heavens and the earth. He prayed for Najashi and he prayed that Islam would spread in his land. This story shows us the closeness between the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, and the teachings of Isa والسلام, which were still existing along the Nile. It also showed that Najashi had accepted Islam. It also showed a strong solidarity between believers and that Islam itself is not confined only to the Arabian Peninsula but it is the religion of all of the prophets. It confirmed the fact that the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him came as the seal of the prophets and messengers. It is reported by Urwa ibn al-Zubair on the authority of Aisha radiallahu anha that she said when Najashi died it used to be said that a light was constantly seen over his grave. This is an important statement and Ibn Ishaq the great uh, biographer of the life of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him reports the name of at least 15 of the companions of the Prophet who died in Abyssinia. These graves are located today in the high mountains in the Tigray province in Ethiopia. Here we find the graves of the Sahaba and the graves of Najashi. It is a peaceful place and it is a place where people remember the relationship between believers. It is a place that is of the greatest importance to the history of Islam and the history of Africa itself. What this is showing us, and it is so important for us to reflect upon this, what it shows us is the relationship between the Arabian Peninsula and what is now known as the African continent. In actuality, the Red Sea is not really a barrier between the two. In actuality, there was always a connection between the people. And the people of Ethiopia were migrating to Yemen, to the, to the northern part of Arabia from earliest times. Also we know in studying language that the Semitic languages were spoken by the peoples not only in the Arabian Peninsula but Semitic languages were spoken all over Ethiopia. And so a strong relationship existed between these countries and for people who really look at the history of this part of the world, we need to reflect upon the whole concept of nation states. Does Asia begin with the Red Sea? Is to the right of the Red Sea Asia and to the left of the Red Sea Africa? What is the real reality? From an Islamic perspective, it is all part of the same territory. From an Islamic perspective, and then looking at history itself, we find that this contact was part of a long series of relationships that developed between the people of the Arabian Peninsula and those who were living in the mountains and valleys of Ethiopia. Another important aspect that comes out of the life of Najashi is that the relationship between Muslims and African people has always been one of solidarity. From the beginning, Islam did not enter into the African continent as an imperialistic force. There were no soldiers forcing people to accept Islam, taking slaves in Africa and bringing them back in the name of Islam. Yes, slavery did exist and many of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him were slaves. But these slaves came from Persia, from Europe, from Arabia, from Ethiopia and from all parts of the neighboring countries. And so slavery was an institution not particular to Arabia but slavery was an institution that was practiced by people all over the planet. 
And so the contact that came with Islam opened up a new chapter. Muslims were able to break the bonds of slavery. That slavery should not be to human beings, but slavery should be to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And so the contact that was made initially between the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the people of Al-Habasha, Abyssinia, present-day Eritrea and Ethiopia, was one of solidarity. The Arab Muslims came into Abyssinia not as conquerors. They came as refugees. They found sanctuary. They found friendship and brotherhood from a Christian king. This is a lesson from the ancient times, but it is a lesson that is of utmost importance <clears throat> today in the world when tensions have developed between the great monotheistic religions. If we return to the people who followed the original teachings of the great prophets and messengers, we find that the message is fundamentally the same. And I believe that if Jesus and Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them all, were here today, they would embrace one another and not look for differences between each other. Such it was with the followers of Muhammad, peace be upon him, who went to Ethiopia. The Prophet Muhammad had stated to his followers, go to Ethiopia. It is a land wherein the king will not tolerate injustice. It is a land of truth. Hiya ardu sidqin. Go there until Allah decides for you and relieves you from distress. And so the companions went forward across the Red Sea and they met love, friendship and solidarity. This is an important story of the relationship of Islam to the rest of the world. And so therefore we remember the name of Najashi and we pray that Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the best in the hereafter and bless him for his striving. I leave you with this thought. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.